On March the 28th, 2015, I got a call from my daughter. All she said was, there's been a family emergency. I called Jordan around 10.30 in the morning just to check and see how things were going with the baby. I could just sense something wasn't completely right, so I did rush over. When I got there, I heard Lee crying from outside of the apartment complex. Lee already had a black eye on the left side. When I asked Jordan what happened, he said that she had fallen off the bed. Obviously, a 30-day-old baby doesn't fall off the bed. When I walked in my house, the baby was crying. She had bruises on her head. Her right eye was totally red. She just looked horrible. My daughter said, Jordan, beat the baby. She was yelling, where the is Jordan? Where is he? I'm going to kill him. I called the police and told them that my grandson had beat his baby. My next telephone call was to him. I said, you better hope the police get to you before I do, because I will kill you. Lee was in the hospital for five days. She had two brain bleeds, two black eyes, severe bruising to the left side of her face and head, and she had bruises on her rib cage where he had squeezed her. The next day, I went with my daughter to the apartment, and there was about a one-foot square section missing from the carpet. My grandson told a friend that he had placed Lee on the floor and stomped on her. And that was the reason the carpet was taken up for evidence. Jordan did completely confess. For Jordan's sentencing, I wrote a letter to the judge asking for lenience due to Jordan's disability. The judge sentenced him to 12 years. It's just an unspeakable crime what he did. I absolutely support my son and I always will. Well, Emma says despite Jordan being locked up for nearly beating his baby daughter to death, she is still concerned for her granddaughter's well-being because Jenny refuses to keep her son Jordan out of Lee's life. My grandson is dead to me. I can never imagine having any kind of relationship with him, ever. I'll kill the son of a bitch if I get my hands on him. That's how I feel about it. My daughter Jenny has remained in contact with her son during the course of his incarceration. She writes to him regularly. They speak on the phone. I've never understood the relationship that my daughter has with her son. To me, it's just sick and dysfunctional. She has mailed him pictures of the baby. I don't think he has the right to even say the baby's name, let alone have a picture of her. He barely has rights as a human being, as far as I'm concerned. There is a restraining order prohibiting Jordan from having any contact with Lee, and that includes having contact with Jenny because she has custody of Lee. Earlier this year, she had a separate phone that she used to talk to her son. One night, the baby came into my room. She was pretending to talk on the phone, and I said, Annie, who are you talking to? She said, Jordan. The fact that she knows his name infuriates me. I said, don't ever, ever talk to this man. He's a bad, bad man contacted the Department of Corrections and told them about the contact that was occurring between Jenny and Jordan. She denied me contact with Lee for two months as my punishment for betraying her. My only concern is what is best for Lee. Lee is the reason I live. I would die for her, I would kill for her. She's a very, very special little girl. That she survived what she did and has turned into the most wonderful, fantastic child, and that's my reward. So everybody understands this. You're Jenny's mother, and Jordan is Jenny's son, and Lee, the baby, has now been adopted. So Jenny is both the grandmother and the mother because she's now adopted the child. And I'm the great-grandmother and the granddaughter. Yeah. And it is very clear that she is not to allow any contact between Jordan and Lee, correct? There's a restraining order prohibiting him from having any contact with Lee until Lee is 13 years old. When this happened, she called a family meeting. I don't understand the theory under which you find this child beat nearly to death and you do anything other than get her immediately to the best help you can as fast as you can get her there. Well, that's an indication of why I say I think the relationship is sick. I mean, that would be a normal response as far as I'm concerned, that if you, like I walked into my house and found this baby and I immediately called the police. I mean, there's nothing else, and an ambulance, there's nothing else that you would do.